this morning I want to speak to you under the caption demolishing the stronghold or pulling down the stronghold people of God God is sorry God is omniscient God knows everything and God is so so justifiable in everything we go through keep this in mind and the second thing is God is not a respecter of persons God is not the respecter of persons and God gives 365 days for everybody and God gives 12 months for everybody and gives 24 hours everybody and God gives every second every minute everything everybody is the same but some people are successful and some people are not am I right so I just want you to make you understand this morning because this whole month in January the Lord is asking us to get into the ear the Lord has given at us amen I want you to, or rather the Spirit of God wants you and me to get into the ear so that you can have a successful ear. Amen. Hallelujah. For you to have a successful ear, you got to do some uh, uh, stuff into your life or uh, some challenges you got to take. Amen. Hallelujah. Because success is not a, what you call, uh, a luck. Amen. Put it this way. Success is never a lucky thing or a luck. Success is uh, out of your efforts. Amen. Hallelujah. And now the Spirit of God is saying, unless you want to follow certain ways, unless uh, certain things uh, happen into your life, you cannot really step into the ear what I commanded you. And one of the things you got to understand is, there should be a, uh, there, 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 there are strongholds in our lives. And you got to know how to destroy or how to demolish or how to, you know, completely eradicate the strongholds in your life. Amen. Hallelujah. Understand now? Now you open the Bibles with me to book of 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verses 1 to 5. I want everybody to open the Bible. I want to read 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verses 1, 2, 3, and 4. It's a Paul writing to the church of Corinthians and Paul is uh, appealing them and begging them in a very strong way. This is where I want you to understand that. Put it this way. This morning, your, as your pastor, as your shepherd, I'm begging you and appealing you to do certain things so that your life will be better off. Amen. Hallelujah. Am I making it sense? That's what Paul meant to be. Paul is begging the Corinthians and Paul is appealing to the Corinthians. Uh, Paul is trying to plead the Corinthians. Hey Corinthians, if you do these things, I'm sure you can have a wonderful life. Amen. With this concept, I'm reading this. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verses 1 to 4. By the humility and gentleness of Christ, I appeal to you, I, Paul, who am timid when face to face with you, but uh, bold towards you when away. I beg you that when I come, I may not have to be as bold as I expect to be towards some people who think that we live by the standards of the world. There are some people in the church that think that they can live according to the standards of the world. Please listen carefully. May I beg you, may I appeal you, may I beseech you that this message, let it go in your spirit that you will become something for the glory of God in the days to come. Amen. Hallelujah. And what he's saying was this, for though we live in this world, we do not wage against the war. Though we live in this world, we do not wage war as the world does, but the weapons we fight, the weapons we fight, which are not the weapons of this world, on the contrary, they have divine power to demolish the strongholds. They have the divine power to demolish 
a stronghold so you can look at me now people of God you got to understand there is a stronghold in your life that is compelling you that's binding you that's not allowing you to come into the grace of God to come into the presence of God or to come into the plans and the purpose of God and as a servant of God Paul beseeching and requesting and appealing and begging the people of Corinth hey my brothers and sisters please get rid of your strongholds and it's not by might not by power but by the spirit amen hallelujah it's saying on the contrary the weapons we fight which are not of the weapons of this world on the contrary they have the divine power i just want to teach you and tell you something about the strongholds which is so 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 powerful and they're destroying our lives destroying our families destroying our society destroying our spiritual life our emotional life our family name it they'll destroy it you name it they'll destroy it that's why i'm going to speak to you very powerful thing today a, a stronghold is nothing but a fortress just giving a meaning a fortress is nothing but a stronghold you know you know how many how many of you seen forts yes because we come from an Asian background, we have so many forts around us. Amen. Hallelujah. Fort means it will guard you, it will protect you, and it will save you. Am I right? Amen. Because we see in the Old Testament, we see all the kings, they have the forts in Samaria, in Jerusalem, they have forts. And any army, they want to seize them. They really destroy the fort they have and that means the walls they have around the big solid walls and behind them they are safe amen a strong wall is something a fort that is standing in your mind and blocking every blessing of god amen lha christianity is not just oh i'm born again oh no it's not just because coming to the church. No, it doesn't help you. You got to understand the word of God and read and go according to the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm hearing some applauses. Amen. Hallelujah. Good. That's wonderful. You know, big people are sitting idle, but hey, that's what God said. If you don't praise him, the stones will praise God. Hallelujah. Glory be to Let us not go into that area. Let stones praise God. We praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. People of God, a fortress, uh, uh, the stronghold is a fortified place around you. A stronghold is a place of, you know, insecurity. A stronghold is a place dominated by a particular mindset. You got to understand very clearly. And in a, put it in a nutshell, a, strong, a, a spiritual stronghold is anything that has got the power over you over your mind, over your life, over everything around you. Amen? Hallelujah. Am I clear? Glory be to God. A strong holy is always in your mind. A strong holy is always in your mindset. So what it is going to be, we are going to see now how what is fortifying your mind and how you can come out of that I go as quickly as possible. Please understand your life is what your mind is. Listen carefully. If your mind is clear, your life is clear, your mind is clumsy, your life is clumsy, your mind is, you know, every kind of stuff, your life has got every kind of stuff. Amen. Hallelujah. Mindset defines your living. Am I right? Mindset defines the quality of your living as well. Mindset defines your living is one thing. And mindset defines the quality of your living. Amen. Hallelujah. And battles are not what outside, but battles are what inside of your mindset. That's what Paul is saying. Hey, I beg 
you this morning. As a, as a pastor, as a shepherd, I beg you this morning, please understand this topic. If you understand it, you'll do something powerful in your family, in your, uh, uh, at your workplace, and at the church, and more than anything, for the glory of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. You know, what is mindset? Mindset is nothing but your values you carry. Mindset is nothing but your ideology. Mindset is nothing but your beliefs. Your belief system. If your belief system is wrong, your life has gone wrong. Hallelujah. Am I reaching church? If you are reaching, say Amen. This is what your mindset is. It is a pack of beliefs. It's an ideology. It's your values that you respect with. Are your values that you degrade with? I go quickly. Proverbs chapter 23 verse 7 tells me, As he thinketh, so he be. Listen to me. There's just a single word. Don't worry for that. Proverbs 23 7. For as he thinketh. In other words, for as a man thinketh in the heart, so is he. That means what you think in your mind you will become amen hallelujah that's what the bible tells me that means your thinking has got every power to change your lifestyle to change your ideology to change your ethics to change your values and to change your personality upside down it's not outside it is inside of your mind that's what paul says i beg you i beseech you i plead you this is a problem we have every day in our life because our mindsets are different from your mindset and your mindsets are different from our mindset and we have a quarrel. Amen? Everywhere. If your mindset is different in the office and your boss mindset is different, you have a quarrel. If your mindset is different and your children mindsets are different, you have a quarrel in the family. Anywhere. Mindset. A person is led by a mindset. Mindset is nothing but your values you carry. Mindset is nothing but your ideologies you carry. And mindset is nothing but the precepts and the things that you're following. Glory be to God. Let me go quickly. Let me go quickly. Very important. A stronghold. As I said, there's a stronghold of the mind. Emotional strongholds. But all the emotional strongholds, they live in the mind as well. So I'm mostly talking the mind and the emotions this morning. If you can overcome this, you overcome anyone and any place, anywhere, and you do the will of God. I, 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 I watch for you this morning. What is a stronghold of the mind? A stronghold of the mind, listen, 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 those who are watching me, listen. What is stronghold of the mind? A strong, why do you say stronghold first thing? And where is the stronghold? And what is the stronghold? A stronghold of the mind is a lie that Satan has established in your thinking. Make any sense? Let me repeat it. A stronghold of the mind is a lie that Satan has established in our thinking that we come as true but it is actually a false belief that means who is having a stronghold in our life devil now from the devil you have to change it to spirit of god am i right message is clear when we embrace these lies they affect our attitude they affect our emotions, they affect our ideology, they affect our believing system, and they affect, finally, our behavior. Am I right? I'm defining you. An emotional stronghold. We all have emotional strongholds because we are, a human is basically an emotional being. And what is this emotional stronghold? Fear. Doubt, unfaithfulness, rejection, anger, confusion, bitterness, unforgiveness, lust, adultery, pride, stubbornness, and a victim mentality is all in your mind. See, 
what we have. This is very broad, but I'll come to the later. People of God. I want to focus on the spiritual thing now and I want to explain to you to make you understand why we are getting into strongholds and how the strongholds are continue to destroy our lives. Amen? How the devil works? The devil works through the lies. What is, it? What, what is the title for the devil? He's a father of lies. Come on, you can say the words, you know all that. Devil is a father of lies. So, devil's operation is always lying to you, but he'll never tell you he's lying to you. Amen, hallelujah. This is a technique, and this is the deception of the devil, and we never understand that. And let me tell you now. A lie often told in a becomes the truth. Amen? Am I reaching you? If you keep on telling the lies to your kids, they, begin, they think that it is true. A beautiful, I explained to you, listen this carefully. A lie often told in a becomes a truth. Another thing, a lie told once remains a lie, but a lie told thousand times changes to truth. A lie told once remains lie, but a lie told thousand times are repeated enough truth. Here, it becomes truth to you. Amen. Another thing, if you listen to a lie long enough, it becomes your reality. We are becoming the reality of the devil's plans. We become the reality of the devil's world because knowingly or unknowingly, we are succumbing to the lies of the devil so that whatever the devil tells me, Anything that why pastor is talking, devil, devil is talking to me. I show you how the devil completely robs our life. Right from the small till the big things. Amen? He never tells you he is behind you. That's how crafty. That's how crafty he is. The perception will change. First thing is said. I said doubt. I said fear. I said unfaithfulness. Remember this thing. Doubt. Fear, unfaithfulness. First thing she came to Eve. Eve, did God say this? Changing the perception of Eve. Putting the doubt. And they put the doubt and kept on talking. That's the Bible beautiful tells. They kept on talking. Eve and serpent. Bible beautifully says they kept on talking. She is asking. I mean, devil is asking, she is replying. Devil is asking, she is replying. Serpent is asking, she is re kept on talking. So the more she talked, her mind changed because doubt came into her life. And doubt changed our belief system. What is the belief system? God said no, and I am saying yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Amen. Yeah. It didn't change anything. It didn't, it didn't make uh, you like it. Oh, devil, no. Hey, did God say that? No, 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 no. You can eat the food, man. You know how knowledgeable this is what our believing system, our believers, our churches are much into. No, 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 no problem. We can do that. No, no, no. As a believers, hey, we can say this. Hey, as a believers, we can go there. As a believers, we can do this. No problem. Your mindset is changed. Your stronghold has come into your life. So then you block the blessing of God. Amen. What it changed is the values. The values of the woman in the beginning was changed because of the lies of the devil. But the devil never projected to Eve or Adam as he is lying. But he deceptively said that doubt created into their lives. Amen. How many doubts in your life about the word of God? How many doubts about you, uh, uh, about the doctrine of the word of God? Do you know the doctrine? We know clue, we are doubt. What the word says, we listen. I come to that later. If you listen to your life long enough, it becomes your reality. And the truth never changes because you believe lies. The, the, the beauty of it, the truth will never change because you believe lies. 
your your values changes your attitude changes your ideology changes and thereby your behavior changes and your behavior gives the habits and the habit will decide your destiny so every thinking of the process of your life will decide a destiny ahead of you if you don't set your mindset your destiny is gone amen hallelujah understand the strategy of the devil understand how the devil is changing the belief system he's not doing anything to you he's just making a small change to your belief system and he's operating you in the same values thereby you're losing the word of god do you have to okay i'll come back why do we see the belief system your thought arises out of your belief am i right see it's everything is intelligent we we can't take for granted because of our thoughts oh thought okay it's okay no it's not okay you got to handle your thought process in the very beginning otherwise if you don't handle your thought process you end up in a destiny that is not designed for you amen let me tell you out of the belief comes the thoughts out of the thoughts comes your actions out of the actions comes your habits out of the habits comes the character and out of the character comes the destiny in other words your destiny is directly connected to your belief system amen more of a teaching is it we need a bit of teaching as well church is for that we teach church i don't teach these things outside i preach outside i teach to my church and my people amen so your thought process is directly decides your destiny is your thought process according to the word of god then you go according to the word of god and your destiny is what god plans for you but if your thought process is not according to the word of god Yes, it's not. People of God, I want to just give you an example from the word of God from the Deuteronomy chapter. I mean, sorry, Numbers chapter 30. You know what? Moses sends 12 tribes. Listen carefully. Moses sent 12 tribes to find out the land of Canaan. And the 12 tribes were leaders. Every tribe a leader has been selected and every leader has been sent there. And all the leaders will go there and all the leaders will come back with a beautiful report. Listen carefully. I want to show you how the devil changes the values and the destiny. Because if you change the value, your destiny is gone. Hallelujah. And he said, 12 tribes, heads will come back. And 10 people and all 12 gave the same report. You know that the land is flowing with milk and honey. The land is beautiful. The land is green. Oh, you can't see the you know, grapes are carrying the two people on the pole. They're carrying the grape. And the land is beautiful and green and lushy and flowing with milk and honey. Beautiful report. All 12 gave. But they came the work of the devil. And ten people said, but one thing. What is that? But one thing. What is the one thing? They are huge. They are massive. They are giants. They are this. They are that. We are like grasshoppers before them. And fear. Fear. Oh, God will speak to you this morning. A fear came. They will twisted the people and put a fear into their lives, doubt into their life, unfaithful into their life. They're unfaithful to God. Hey, we can't uh, go for a battle with them. No, no, the land is gone, but people are massive. We cannot fight. We're like a grasshopper. But there are two people, Caleb and Joshua. Hey, they said, God not oh hallelujah not by might not by power but by my spirit share the lord we can win over the anakites and the amalekites and all kinds of kites amen hallelujah we can win anybody because it's not by my 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 what we say my uh, uh weapon my what, what do you call that word weapons of my warfare 
My weapons of warfare is not the sword and spear. My weapon of the warfare is the mindset of God. It's the word of God. It's the promise of God. It's what God has given unto me. Make it destiny. People of God, I tell you, the people could not fight with the mindset of God and the fear and the unfaithfulness and all kinds of things cropped into the life because of the devil changed the values. Because they lost the values. They lost the destiny. Not one person stepped into the land of Canaan. And I make it clear. Don't take it right. Your lives. Don't take it right. Let me go quickly. I, I, I thought, I, I just prepared very little time. But I know I can speak one. Only God has to put the word. Amen. Hallelujah. It will flow. And I know God put the word around 10 o'clock in the night. And I know it will flow. Emotional. You gotta understand. You gotta understand the lies of the devil. Let me go. Little details. One thing you gotta understand: all believers have to have a warfare. Amen. Hallelujah. A warfare. One Peter five eight. The Bible says all believers are in a war. A war with their adversary called the devil. Amen. Hallelujah. And Ephesians 6 12 it says, we, we wrestle against the principle. We are not wrestling with the flesh and the blood. Remember, we are not wrestling with the flesh and the blood. We are wrestling against the principalities, against the powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against the spiritual, spiritual hosts of the wickedness in the heavenlies. I don't have time to explain to the world that itself is a message. Ephesians 6 12 is a message. But my topic is, you, you have got to have a warfare. Amen. Hallelujah. You got to have a warfare when you are going as a believer. And 2 Corinthians 10, 4, the Bible says, as we just read, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pull down of the strongholds. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Mahatma Gandhi said like this. Your belief becomes your thought. Your thoughts becomes your words. Your words becomes your actions. And your actions becomes your habits. And the habits become your values. And your values design your destiny. This is the process. You can't say I have wicked thoughts, I have dirty thoughts, I have dirty mind, but I have a wonderful God-given destiny. No! You cannot. Glory be to God. A stronghold. One of the strongholds that's in our mind this morning. I just want to go through it now. There are two kinds of strongholds. One is addictions and the other one is the materialism. Addiction and the materialism. Addictions are anything like people are get used to addictions. I don't need to tell you uh, you are grown enough and big enough. Alright? Addiction to TV. Addiction to drugs, addiction to alcohol, addiction to porn, addiction to you know whatever things, any anything that you continue to do. Addiction is nothing but your habit, a habit that you cannot leave it. That's an addiction. All right. But materialism is not uh, uh, looks like addiction, but it's worse than addiction. Worldliness. What is wrong with the worldliness? It is not right or wrong. It is how you take it on your face value. For what others is right, it should be wrong to me. It may be wrong to me. But what, right, what is wrong to me may be right to others. So you've got to judge spiritually. A makeup, for example. Makeup by itself is not wrong. But how you connect it to the makeup makes a difference. The dressing is not wrong. But how you are dressing and connected to it. Your mindset is connected that dressing or your mindset is connected to that um, your mindset is connected to the money money is not wrong but how you are connected to the money am I reaching you I mean I'm changing the day and materialism materials are not wrong buying a car is not wrong buying good things in the house is not wrong but how you connected to that your mind your values to that anything you anything you love it that means you are connected to that through the value that means that is more valuable than anything else for you I'm just giving a, a simple example because we're all that. 
I'm watching. Uh, saying some small lies. Any, any, anything, anything for our daily life. I'm just uh, refer anything to it. I'm not going deeper into the spiritual life, which I, I just touch a little bit. So how it, it is not right or wrong. It's how you connect it to that particular thing is what is deciding your destiny. Hallelujah. Some people, oh, they, you know, they give so much of importance when they go out. Not wrong. But how you connect it to that, that makes a difference. Please hope you understand what I'm saying. Anything that you do, that's what Paul says. Everything is permissible, but everything is not profitable. Hallelujah. Everything is permissible, but everything is not profitable. So you got to understand what is profitable to your spiritual life because your thoughts will connect to the destiny what God has given you. Hallelujah. Amen. Our strong words are sometimes masked as good things. Can I explain to this? Our strong words sometimes looks very really good. Some people, I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't do this. I go out to a church and come back. When they say, have you born again? Why should I be born again? I'm going to church. I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't do this, I don't do I'm a goody, goody, goody person. See how the strong hole in their life. What the Bible tells me is, unless you're born again and they have time, you cannot be a Christian. But what is strong is, hey, born in a Christian family, I'm a good person, I'm a Christian. The good things are masked and becomes a strong hole. I'm just giving an example. Am I right? And second thing is, when the people, I said, a lie often told becomes truth. See, we are all born in a traditional Christian families. I born in a Christian family. Many of you like. I born in a Christian family. I used to go to church, go to Sunday school, do all the stuff. But I never born again. And then I was not exposed to the truth. People kept the truth under the form of religion. Am I reaching you now? They will kept. You may be. You may be a Catholic. You may be a Protestant. You may be an Anglican. You may be a Lutheran. You may be a X Y Z. Doesn't matter. Are you born again to be a Christian? That true. Devil is kept under thing. Not now. For the past 15th, 16th century, a lie has been told. A lie has been told. Hey, you go to church, sprinkle baptism and up. You go to church, sprinkle baptism and up. You go to church for Christmas, Easter, that's enough. You go to church, set up. You go to church, set up. You go to church, set up. Sprinkle baptism and up. This set up, this set up, this set up, this set up. A stronghold is formed in your mind. Because you are hearing this lie from the pulpits often, 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 often the lie becomes truth in your life when the truth comes you are unable to accept it am I reaching you? hey, you got to be born again no, I'm a Christian no, you got to be born again some people, they're born again but they don't accept practice these are the stronghold because you often heard the lie. Sprinkle baptism is enough, sprinkle baptism is enough, this baptism is enough, that baptism is enough. You have grown from the childhood, you have grown up. That means, suppose if you have grown 40 years old, your stronghold is 40 years old. Amen. Hallelujah. Am I reaching you? Strongholds have to age also. Every stronghold is not the same thing. Some people develop strongholds when they come to this country. Amen. Hallelujah. Because, uh, you know, beautiful saying in Telugu. Pulling juice in aqua. Amen. I don't know how to explain it in English, like, you know. A cat went into the jungle, into the forest, and saw the tiger. And when the tiger comes, everything is scared of the tiger. Then the cat thought in here. Why they're all getting scared? I'm also looking like the tiger. But why they're not scared of me? Oh, because tiger has got the stripes. Let me make stripes so that they get you know, a friend of me. We have people like that. Strongholds will tell them, look at others. Look at others where they can improve their spiritual life, not they dictate, you know, 
kill your spiritual life. Amen. Hallelujah. Our strongholds sometimes are masked. Like good things. Adam and Eve, you take example. I don't need to waste time again and again. They thought it's good. It's good to have the knowledge. Amen. People of God. And not only that. We may not get into addictions of what I talk in the other page. But we have addiction to bad language. Best thing is addiction to our uh, timings. Let me say with all my respect, with all my love for people. It's an addiction. You are unable to come out of the strong. It's a strong hole. Ah, hello today. Ah, hello today. Ah, say it. Ah, we can go there. Ah, we can see there. Ah, we can do that. Please, with all the respect I'm talking, with all the love I'm teaching. Because I got to teach, I got to teach. That's a strong hole. Timing is a strong hole in our mind. We can't. We have to break it. Amen. And lying is a stronghold. For some people, they lie for anything. For good and bad, everything they lie. That's it, that's a habit. Because you're strong. See, a stronghold when it's in your mind, it doesn't sit empty or doesn't sit free. It makes you work. Makes you work up from values. It sits here and it makes you work. Works through the habits, habits through the character, and character through the destiny. So, any stronghold that is sitting in our life, in my life, never sit quiet. Amen. Hallelujah. It speaks. It destroys our life. Glory be to God. How to break the strongholds? Now we understand. There are so many strongholds. I say. I don't know where to go. I, I want to go very, very uh, surface so that you can go deeper things understand. I gave the list of uh, uh, strongholds from the very surface level, right? Let me read one more time before I get into that. Fear is a stronghold. This, uh, this, many people just try by this. Amen? You have to translate, uh, you, can do, you have to change the fear into faith. Amen? Hallelujah. Where the fear, there is no faith. Where the faith, there is no fear. So fear and faith cannot exist together. And the doubt, and doubt you have to replace with the truth. Amen? Hallelujah. Yes, you have to take baptism, you have to take baptism. I have to be born again, I have to be born again. The rest all is lies. And see, the devil keeps us in that uh, re religious life and that destroy our destiny. Amen. Hallelujah. When we when we die, we have to go to eternity. But because we lived in the life, we can't go to eternity. We'll go to some other place which I don't want to say. There's only two places. No in-between place like purgatory. These are lies we are taught. These are lies we are taught. Everything we are taught is lies. There is no purgatory. Only heaven and the hell. How we come to the purgatory? It's been taught from the childhood. A lie after told becomes truth into your life. Amen? Fear, doubt, unfaithfulness, rejection. Some people scared of rejection in the society, rejection in the family, rejection in the workplace. And some people anger, anger management, we do that. Amen. And some people confusion because their mindset is never stay. And they take one decision and immediately that's that's a stronghold in their life. They can never take one decision. And bitterness, I explained a lot. Unforgiveness, bitterness, lust. It's a stronghold. Lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, and pride of life. There's a stronghold. Adultery is a stronghold. And stubbornness is a stronghold. And victim mentality, everything they think it's, you know, for them. They, they'll become victim every place, all the time. These are all the emotional strongholds that they will use this so that we can go all of the ways of God. I give you important things. How to break a stronghold? First thing is, recognize you have a stronghold in your life. Some people are, I, I'm okay. I'm okay. You know who will recognize the strongholds? Not you. The person who is living with you. Amen? Isn't it? A child can say that. My daughter can say that. Dad, this is a stronghold. Hey, this is what yes, we do. Your husband can say that. Your wife can say that. Your children can say that. Your boss can say that. A pastor can say that. I can say it, definitely. Because I've been with you. Because we pray, we, you know, God reveals certain things. I know so many people's strongholds. 
Some we can, some we can't. As the Lord leads, we move. So strongholds, you've got to be really careful. First, recognize you have strongholds. What is stopping you? What is stopping you? Is the worldliness stopping you from the Lord? Is the passions of the world, the lusts of the world, the pride of the world, are the fear for future, are the undoubt, I mean, doubts in your mind? What is stopping you? What is your stronghold? Recognize your stronghold first. And the second thing is, repent for the lies you believe and accept the truth. Amen. Hallelujah. If you keep on living in that lie, you can never become what God wants you to be. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh Lord, thank you. You brought me to the light. Lord, I repent for the lies I believe. Lord, I'm holding on to the truth now. Amen. Hallelujah. That's the second reason, second point you got to understand. First, you have to recognize what your stronghold is. And then you have to ask the Lord repentance for that. What you believe, the lie, and go to the truth. And the third thing is, be humble and honest before God to change. I want to speak to this change. This word change. That's the third thing. And the fourth one is, allow God to demolish the strongholds. That means you must allow the Holy Spirit of God. See, in, in your, your mindset, it's all your mindset. If you allow the mindset with the word, what is filled your thoughts is a mindset. If the thoughts are filled with the word of God, if the thoughts are filled with the you know, spirit of God and the prayer or whatever, then you know that your stronghold is the Lord. But if you have something that can go strong, you go slowly because you have a strong mindset of God. But your mindset is completely with the word and the holiness and the money and the you know uh, fear and doubt and all. Then you gotta be really, really careful to get out of that. Amen. First one is recognize your stronghold and allow God to show you. And the second one is repent for the lies you have believed and uh, you know come to the word of God. And third one is be humble and honest before God to change, which I'm going to speak to you. And the fifth one is surrender to the plans and the purpose of God so that God can give you a new destiny. Amen. Because this year I want all our believers to do wonderful wherever they are. Amen. Hallelujah. I want you to see a profound growth not only in terms of material things in the spiritual things as well. Amen. Let me talk a bit about the growth. I mean, sorry, change. What is it? Be humble and honest before God to change. What to change? What to change? I just quickly finish it. Change what you believe and accept what you didn't believe. Change means change what you believe because you have certain values you have certain ideology you have certain uh, uh, you know mindset you have to change your mindset there's no other way because truth remains true amen holiness of god oh is it necessary if it's not necessary for you it's not necessary but if, for me it's necessary Reading the word of God day and night, is it necessary for you? It may not be necessary for you, it's necessary for me. Praying regularly in the presence of God, it may not be necessary for you, but it's necessary for me. It is a stronghold. And they will say, ah, come on, you're going once a week to the church. Isn't that there's so many people not going to the church, man? At least you are going. It's a mindset. Console you. Our oh, holiness, what holiness is that? Come on, we are youngsters. Hey, we are young, we are still 40, we are still 35. It's all in the old days, 60s. Mindset, I'm not talking right or wrong. My, my argument is not right or wrong. What is your mindset? How, hey, when it comes to the Lord? What is the mindset for you, God? Hey, God has got a plan for me. God has got a purpose for me. God wants to be holy. God has got something to do with me. Let me pray, let me seek the guide. What is your mindset? How your mindset that's your stronghold if my mindset is completely with the word of god and the thoughts of god the fortress around me is the word of god amen devil cannot attack me if your mindset is completely the world and the holiness and the things of the world your world your fortress is completely devil and the word of god is very difficult for you to penetrate to touch your soul am i reaching what's your mindset change Change what you believe 
and accept what you didn't believe it. Amen. Hallelujah. Strongholds don't just sit in your mind, but they do something in your mind. Amen. Hallelujah. And second thing you're going to say, they produce actions. As I said, when a stronghold is in your mind, the mindset, the thinking, thinking just cannot live in thinking. Amen. Hallelujah. Every murder starts with the thinking. Isn't it? Every adultery starts with the thinking. Every obscene thing you start with the thinking. Every good thing also start with the thinking. Amen. Hallelujah. Every powerful thing is also start with the thinking. Every constructive thing also start with it. So and that's good or bad, it start with thinking. This is my point today. Good or bad, I'm not arguing. I'm, I'm preaching on that. What's your thinking now? Where is your thinking? How is your, when it comes to God, when it comes to the church, when it comes to the believers, when it comes to the body of Christ, when it comes to your family, when it comes to your job, when it comes to your children, when it comes to your husband, when it comes to your wife, when it comes to your relationship, when it comes to your mind, every day there is a mindset. And that will bring you discipline. In your finances, you should have a mindset. Ah, we'll see tomorrow. You'll be a papa. I'm just giving an example. In your relationship, you always accuse, you always point out, you always show that hey, I'm the best, I'm the great, I'm this. What's your mindset? Yeah, am I reaching you? In every walk of your life, with every relationship, you have a mindset. Amen? Between wife and husband, you have a mindset. Between child and parent, you have a mindset. Between boss and uh, uh, subordinate, you have a mindset. Between a, a lecturer and a student, you have a mindset. Everywhere, your life always goes with a mindset. Depends where you have relationships. That you got to change if that is not right. If that's not according to the word of God. That's what I mean to say this this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be here. And because your mindset produces the behavior. When you change what you believe, listen carefully. I beg you everybody to listen carefully and to follow this because I'm going to wind up. Listen carefully. When you change what you believe, you will change what you do. Amen? Is it, is it sounding good? When you change what you believe, you do the new thing. Because you, 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 you are changing from the un, uh, un, uh, unreality or uh, you are changing from what is wrong and you are coming, you do a new thing. That's what it's saying. When you change what you believe, you will change what you do. That means your doings will change. When you change your past doings, when you change your past thinking, when you change your past values, when you do things, you do things what is pleasing to God. Our word is pleasing according to the word of God. And also it says that as you think your heart, as you think in your heart, so you do it. Amen. Proverbs 23. How you think in your heart, you'll speak. I, I, I don't have time to explain to you everything. Just imagine even the church atmosphere. I don't like that. If I had I'm not saying right. My point today, I'm not speaking on right or wrong. My thing, my point today is how is your thinking? When you're stepping out of this church, what is your thinking? When you're stepping out of the house, what is thinking? So everything, your mind, your mind. I, I tell often, often we discuss in our uh, in, in our home. What I am is my mindset. If I have a freak of jeans and this, but it's a mindset. I have to go with a suit and tie and it's a mindset. So looking at me, people can tell my mindset, amen? Oh, probably he's a decent guy. I mean, am I reaching your church? What you are, it's your mindset. And people can read me because what I am, they'll see only the external thing. So external thing will convey to them something. Hey, this guy is a little different. So when your behavior changes, when your words change, when your work changes, when your doings change, people will recognize, hey, he is thinking differently. Am I right? You're thinking. 
because that brings a destiny. That brings a destiny. Hey, earlier he used to speak very dirty. Now he's thinking his words have changed. Hey, earlier he used to do all dirty things. Now he's doing some change. So every thinking of your life will reflect on your body. How do you have to dress that you are thinking? How do you have to talk that you are thinking? How do you have to do things that you are thinking? How do you have to say that you are thinking? How do you have to, you know, uh, give instructions that you are thinking? Is it bosses up? Are it servanthood? Everything is thinking. Change. Change. What you believe. Because you all believe in the life. I just give this conclusion. Change the stronghold position. See, David is saying three quotations. I quickly go. Psalm 27 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is my stronghold of my life. He changed the stronghold. Earlier, see, David was panicked. David was feared. David was running for his life because Saul is chasing him. They were going all emotions, no doubt about it. Despite of all the things, he's changing the stronghold. Hey, my stronghold is the word of God. May my stronghold is the promise of God because God said that David will be the king of Israel. Hallelujah. So he's changing the stronghold, not with that devil what is chasing, but he's changing the stronghold with the mindset of God and believe in the promise instead of fear he's getting the boldness instead of doubt he's using the word of God instead of unfaithfulness he's standing faithful to the Lord Lord you will bring the promise into my life one day I will be the king of Israel the mindset amen a stronghold is changing the stronghold he ran for his life. He, he hid in uh, all kinds of caves. Uh, he behaved like a mental man. Despite of all that, he turned the battle and said, Lord, I change my stronghold. You are my fortress. So when I go into his fortress, devil cannot attack me. Amen. Hallelujah. That's a stronghold. And he says in Psalm 94, 22, but the Lord has become my stronghold. Amen. It's not the devil, it's not the world, it's not the other thing. My Lord has become my stronghold and my God, the rock of my refuge. Amen? The rock of my refuge. People of God. Last Psalm 99. The Lord is a stronghold for my oppressed and stronghold in times of trouble. His mindset changed. His stronghold is no more the devil. The stronghold is God. I beseech you, I beg you, I appeal you. What you are is your mindset. What's the quality of life you are doing is your mindset. If you have the word of God, if you have the promise of God, if you have the fear of God, if you have the humility of God, if you know God is doing something, let that reflect in your mind. When it reflects in your mind, it reflects through your words. It reflects through your words, it becomes your habits. When it becomes your habit, that produces a character. When the character becomes like that, the character will take you with the destiny of God. May God bless you. Father God, we thank you. We praise you. God, thank you for the word that you spoke into your people. Uh, let our mindset be changed. Let, that's what Paul says in uh, Romans 12 too. Let your minds be transformed by renewing of the word of God. Lord, let, your, let the people who are watching, those who are sitting here, let their minds be transformed by renewing the word of God that they can change. Uh, Lord, everything they're doing, their mindset may change, their values may change, uh, Lord, their ideology may change. Everything, Lord, you change it in line with the word of God and in line with the promise of God that they may hold a better, a better, a better position and a better future. And more than anything, they have a destiny of God in the days to come. I declare that I pronounce it that that kind of a grace may come upon you in Jesus' name. All church say.